Hello again. Now, the police minister, Pekikele, a short while ago, released the crime stats for July to September 2022. Over 900 women were murdered during this period, while sexual offense numbers have increased by 11 percent. Over 13,000 women were also victims of assault with intent to cause grievous bodily harm. Just simply, in simple language, simple English, they were assaulted. Now, for more reaction, let's speak to the CEO of Seoul City Institute, the boss lady herself, Fina Kodisang. Good afternoon, uh, Ms. Kodisang. Thank you very much for your time. Welcome to today. But the picture that is being painted by the crime states today, specifically when it comes to the ongoing violence against women and children, is not a pretty one at all. It's never a pretty one, and that then it's always, you know, each time we know that the report is coming out, we know that we are going to see the failure in the system to address gender-based violence because, you know, these statistics, even as the minister was reading them out, I was saying, does he know that he's accountable for these numbers that he's giving to us? How is he holding himself accountable for the failure to, you know, to address the gender-based violence that we are seeing, the murders of women, and how is he holding the ministry accountable in terms of the backlogs that he keeps reporting on uh, every quarter? You know, how do we then get to a point where in the next report we hear that we have addressed the backlog, we know how to deal with stations like uh, Nyanda and the one in KZN, Inanda. You know, how are we dealing with this? What are the numbers telling him and, and, and his people, because these numbers are not just for us to know what is happening, but it's for the ministers to reflect on the efforts they are putting, whether those efforts are good enough, you know, in which areas do they need to increase capacity, in which areas do they need to make sure that they close the gap. And so if every quarter the numbers are increasing, it means the gap is not closing, it means capacity is not increasing. So what? What is happening? And how is the ministry accounting for this failure uh, that we are seeing where women and children of South Africa are being failed? The minister pointing out, uh, uh, Fina, that many women and children are killed by people they know. They are killed by people in places where they should be safe. Now, policing that would be very, very hard. How, how do you propose the police should assist in making sure that inside the homes there's safety and security for children and women? So if you if you remember, we kept saying we see the numbers rising because of COVID. And we believed because we were locked down in homes and it was COVID, that is why we are seeing this rise. But in fact, we are now seeing that post-COVID, and, and I know we're still having COVID, but post those lockdowns, we see a lot of unemployment. So again, you are still not dealing with the root causes because these women are still with people who are frustrated, they are unemployed, they don't have anything else to do. So we need to address the unemployment um, if we want to address uh, gender-based violence. We need to address, you know, uh, the infrastructural issues. Uh, we saw that um, even some of these buildings are unsafe. So as much as they cannot be in the home to police the home, they need to look at what is happening in those homes. And I can tell you most of the issues that were raised, alcohol being one of them, and unemployment, you know, are the reasons, uh, some of the drivers. And so we need to deal with those so that we can then reduce um, the abuse that is happening in the home. Um, and, and we are not looking into those things. So as much as we can say, yes, um, the police are not responsible for what happens in the home, their response uh, is also equally, you know, what they need to look at. How quickly do they come when they are called? You know, how, how quickly do they respond to cases that are being opened? So that a woman doesn't go back home after opening a case and then now, now the man knows that the case has been opened and he abuses the woman or even kills her because of that. So their response and how they deal with what comes to the police station is equally responsible for what then mm. happens in so the homes. How, how seriously they treat reports of, uh, of abuse and also the question of visi visibility. What is the view of the, Seoul, uh, yeah. of the Seoul City Institute when it comes to the community involvement, the neighbors? Because we always hear that sometimes the neighbor will hear 
the, the, the cries of a woman who's being, who's being abused or a child and, and, and do nothing. I mean, we live in that world where people don't want to get involved in other people's affairs. But some of us grew up when the, uh, 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 the neighborhood was, was working together. And we say this all the time, uh, you know, the, the culture of silence is, is in itself a violation. Because if I hear the screams and I keep quiet, I am perpetuating, I am contributing to this couch. So as a community, we really need to build that social cohesion, which Pillar 2 of the NSP calls for. We need to be there for one another. We need to be the security that you know, we build in our communities, um, even in our homes, as, as a mother, as a brother, as a sister. If you know that one of your family members you know, is, is perpetuating crime, really, you need to take a stand and report okay. it. So we are making a call at Soul City Institute to say, as a community, let us stand together. Let us fight the scourge of gender-based violence together. It can't be left to the police. As much as we want to hold them accountable, it can't, left, it can't be left solely to the police. We have a responsibility. We have a duty as society to also contribute to the prevention of this scourge and building social cohesion and making sure that my neighbor, you know, is, is safe because of me being there, even them ensuring my safety is what we need to get, uh, together to do uh, in these times where we live in. Yeah, I guess finally, it should, the, your approach, your appeal will, uh, will apply to uh, protecting our children. Of course, and, and, and it's concerning that the schools, as much as uh, we cannot say it's the, being done by the people in schools, but if schools that are supposed to be uh, places of safety and learning are also contributing to this scourge of gender-based violence, then there must be something that we also look at. Social institutions are supposed to be protective. The home, the church, you know, the schools, these are social institutions that are part of uh, building societies, mm -hmm. not, you know, uh, sure. bringing them down and not even contributing to the murders and the violation of people. So we need to look at how do we make these institutions uh, safer and also how do we make sure that the learning that happens in these institutions contributes mm. to prevention and not more violation. Thank you very much, Fina Kodisang, the CEO of the Seoul City Institute, giving us some insights and reaction to today's crime stats uh, that uh, were uh, announced. Not today's crime stats, rather the latest crime stats for quarter July to September that were announced today by the police minister, Peggy Trele.